I've been having some problems uh, starting my 2009 Nissan Murano every once in a while. If I don't drive it for a couple days, it has a hard time turning over. And if I don't drive it for uh, more than a week, it uh, doesn't turn over at all. So I don't know if I have a weak battery or if there is a parasitic draw. And today I'm going to try and see if I can figure it out. Once the uh, battery is fully charged, we're just going to disconnect it. And uh, then we'll try to determine if there's any draw on the uh, battery when it's uh, not in use. So we're going to disconnect the negative terminal. Um, I always recommend using the negative terminal because the negative side is actually connected to, um, is grounded to the, the frame of the car. Um, so if we, have, we try to disconnect the positive side first and we uh, hit the wrench on any part of the frame, we're actually going to get a little bit of a shock. So I disconnect the negative terminal because if we hit the frame, it's already connected to ground. So ground connected to ground actually won't give you any shock. All right, just go ahead and lift that up and over. To test to see what draw we have on the battery, we're going to actually use this multimeter here and we're going to make sure that the, it's plugged into the uh, 10 amp DC uh, post and also the, uh, the COM post. So we're going to hook one lead to the uh, battery terminal and the other lead to the uh, clamp, the clamp that was on previously on the uh, negative post. So uh, we're also going to set the multimeter to the 10 amp setting um, on DC 10 amps. The reason uh, we want to set it at the 10 amp setting is uh, we don't want to blow a fuse uh, in case there's a higher amperage uh, going through the, the battery. Now in order to free up my hands, what I'm going to do is connect, use some alligator clips and I'm going to connect uh, one to the red lead on my multimeter and I'm going to connect the other end to the post that was sitting on, uh, or the clamp that was sitting on top of my negative post and I'm going to connect the other one to a, a clamp, an alligator clamp on the post and I can connect that end to my negative post, negative lead on my multimeter. Now that should give me uh, current. Now it's going to start a little higher because it's charging the internal capacitors in the car. So right now that's reading 600 milliamps, so 0 0.6 of an amp. So now it's dropping a bit, 0 0.3, 300 milliamps. Now what we're looking for is 0 0.05 or less. It should be less than 50 milliamps when uh, the car isn't running. That's 180. So that is a little bit high. So we have a little bit of a draw on the uh, battery. And now we're going to try and see if we can figure out what is causing that draw. To figure out what's causing the draw, we're going to have to pull some fuses. So there's two fuse panels. Uh, one is uh, under the hood of the car in this compartment here on the driver's side. And I'm just going to pull those two little clips here. Pull that off. And the other one is on the, in the driver's side, under the dash. Right here, we're just going to pull this panel right off, straight back out. And you're going to see there's another bunch of fuses here. And there's also a fuse puller way up at the top there that we're going to go and reach out and grab so that we can pull some of these fuses. So you're going to want to reach up and grab underneath fuse puller what it looks like so it has two little grippers here you can uh, snap it on a fuse pinch it and then pull the fuse straight out now it also probably sucks the fuse up into this little compartment here so you can pull it out pop it out if you need to so uh, once we pull out the fuses we're gonna go check our multimeter and see if there's a drop in the current. One important thing I forgot to mention is that when the uh, driver's side door is open, uh, there's an interior door light that goes on and it draws a couple amps of current. So uh, we're going to have to disable that by clamping the door sensor shut. As we pull each fuse, we're basically opening up each one of the circuits for the one for the fuses listed here, and uh, that's how we're going to determine which circuit is uh, causing our draw. 
You notice a drop in uh, current draw. Uh, when I pull the fuse for a room lamp, um, it's all right, it's gonna go back out here. You see how we're now registering 120 milliamps, 110, 120, so probably 150 milliamps. So there was a drop, probably about 50 milliamps from uh, that fuse. So we gotta go and check the circuit diagram to see uh, what could be causing that. After disconnecting each fuse in the interior as well as the uh, ones under the hood, there is two fuses that end up dropping the current. Uh, the one was the room lamp on the interior. The other one was this audio fuse here. And as you can see in the map, that's the audio fuse. Um, I have some suspicions on this now. When I first bought the Murano, I installed an iPod integration unit that uh, basically allows me to plug my iPod into the uh, car stereo. So I'm going to go disconnect that device and see if that reduces any of the draw. I just connected the uh, iPod integration unit that I had installed when I first bought the Murano. Uh, it's Neo Car Audio, but I think it's actually made by a company called uh, iSimple. And the model number is PXAMG. So we'll uh, see if that has any uh, positive impact on the current draw. Disconnecting the uh, iPod integration uh, unit that I had installed it takes me down to 0 0.03, and that is uh, about 30 milliamps, and that is totally acceptable. That's about what I expected to see. So I think uh, we actually found the culprit here. I'm going to go do uh, some research online to see if. Uh, Anybody else had any similar issues? After doing some research online, it looks like quite a few people are also experiencing the same issue with this uh, iSimple uh, gateway uh, integration unit for iPods. So if you are experiencing that, I recommend disconnecting it so that you can avoid uh, draining your battery when the, uh, the car is off.